My dear people of God, while we are celebrating the conception by Anne of Mary, the gospel talks about Mary's conception of Jesus in her womb. Two different things. The second should belong to March 25 plus nine months, December 25. The first should be December 8 plus nine months, September 8. That is the nativity of the Blessed Mother. But suffice it to say that even if the gospel talks about Mary's conception of Jesus, we already kind of have an idea that it was Anne who conceived Mary that pertains to the first reading. How does this come about? Let us talk about your vocation, my vocation. Who are you? Where are you going to? How do you get there? Who are you? Creatures of God with a destiny towards happiness that was gone. But we will get back there because of a woman. Don't forget that every time you see a statue of the Blessed Mother and at her feet is the snake or the serpent, always remember this, that in the book of Genesis, chapter 3, verse 15, it goes this way. The serpent will bite your heel and you will crush his head. There is always that image of Mary, the woman, crushing the head of the serpent. Your offspring will be in perpetual animosity against the serpent's offspring. The followers of the light will always be against the followers of darkness. But for us to appreciate even the mere wordings of the first reading, I want you to have an idea of what that woman will be. Remember, every time we hear about the feast of the readings of the feast of the Immaculate Conception, we always get back to Genesis 3:15, the woman. What is the name of that machine that produces electricity? Generator. And what is the name of the physician that takes care of pregnant women? Gynecologist. Why? It is because the original word here for the woman is gyne. Look at my lips. You pronounce G-Y-N-E this way, gyne. That's why an obstetrician gynecologist is somebody who helps produce, give birth to the baby. A machine that produces electricity is generator. And the box for germination is generation box. Because gyne, the woman, promised by God from all eternity to crush the head of the serpent is powerful, is a producer. So much so that I love to position myself as a follower of this woman. That this woman chosen by God from all eternity would be the very in instrument for the Son of God to be born of her. Having said such, let me talk about the Son of God. The angel Gabriel was sent to a town in Nazareth to a virgin, not a woman, to a virgin, betrothed to a man named Joseph of the house of David. And the angel said, Kairi Maria Kekaritumene, hail, full of grace. In that old style of speaking, that full of grace meant fullest. Because back then, the grammar of that Aramaic Expression was full, fuller, fullest. But if you talk about the culture at the time, if you say full, there is no space. It's fullest. So if we translate or we rephrase the greeting of Gabriel towards Mary, it will be this way. Hail, fullest of grace. She may not have understood that, not knowing yet her mission in life. But she was humble enough to say, what does this mean? And the angel explained to her, You were chosen by God. You will conceive and bear a son. You shall call him Jesus. Yahshua, Yahweh saves. The Lord God saves. That means this boy, this Messiah, this Savior to be born of the woman is Yahweh himself who saves his people. Imagine that. 
from that woman in Genesis 3.15 to this woman asking, how can this happen? The answer will be, the Holy Spirit will overshadow you. And this Messiah, this baby, this son to be born from you will save his people from their sins. Now we have a complete idea. What is in this feast, the 8th of December, have to do with salvation? Oh, the greatest. It is because this spells out our vocation to be happy. Adam and Eve just spoiled that. When Adam was called by God, where are you? I'm hiding. Why? Did you eat of the forbidden fruit? The woman you gave me, there you go. The human psychology. We don't know how to accept guilt. The woman you gave me. You will ask the woman, what do you eat? The serpent gave me. Always passing the guilt. And now here is the woman promised by God saying, be, be done unto me according to your word. Acceptance, not of her sins. She has no sins, but of a mission given by God to save that first woman. Look at your vocation. Experience the call of God to be happy. That was the primordial calling for our first parents, which they lost, but we can regain it because of this woman. Guinea, the generatrix of the graces, from whom is generated the Messiah. So look at the beauty of the first reading on the gospel and put that within the beauty of the first reading. Paul, in his letter to the Ephesians, is saying, God has loved us from all eternity. So much so that he chose us before the foundation of the world. Imagine, before the foundation of the world, there was nothing yet, and then God loved you already. So let me ask, who is ahead, the world or you? In the mind of God, John. You were in the mind of God long before he created the world. First in the intention, last in the execution. A beautiful way of saying, you must be important because the world was made for you first. All the vegetation, all the animals, everything ready for your coming. First in the intention, last in the execution because you are important. Back to your vocation, back to my vocation. We are loved by God. We are important for Him. That's why when He created us, He created us for all happiness. Spoiled by our first parents, redeemed by me, by Jesus, through Mary. Amen.